You know, last week we talked about a particular topic called Restoration Requires Repentance. Amen. You know, some of these teachings that we do in this church can, can, be, can appear very tough. It's hard to understand. You may not jump from your seat. You may sit there probably feeling pretty bad. It's okay. Because we need to know the scripture. Amen. We were looking at the fact that, you know, how do we sometimes confess our sins? It's, it is all of us. I'm talking about myself, you, all of us. So when we are so tired, the end of the night, end of the day, before we go to bed, <clears throat> we sit by the bay, bedside at times, and we say, Lord, it's been a hard day. You've been so good to us. And if you did anything this past 24 hours, whatever the time frame, uh, please forgive. Amen. Do you believe those sins are forgiven? I'm just simply asking. You don't even remember what you did that day. Or we don't remember what we did that day. Maybe you probably did something horrible that day. It can be any X, Y, Z sins in our lives. But how is our repentance? What quality of repentance we have? Lord, if I did something, I don't remember. But if you remember, <clears throat> you can forgive. You take your time. When I go to bed, you take your time. Lord, sweet time. Then you remember, forgive my sin. Is that forgiven? So we looked at the fact that restoration, we want to be restored by God. Bible, as you read Bible, you understand. Any kind of restoration requires true repentance. Amen. You know, since for the past many months, our topic has been Failure. You know, we're talking about the, the anatomy of failure. We were taking David as an example, going through various aspects of that particular subject. Now, we are talking about how David responded to Nathan's rebuke. Nathan Pravadagande, Shaktavaitula, Shasana Yoda, Davida, Yangana Pradigarishu. How did he respond? How did he respond? How did he repent of his sin? David actually wrote Psalm 51 as an answer to our question. So our focus was Psalm 51. And right at the heading itself, we, we, we read it, right? I read this last week, the Psalm of David when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had gone to Bathsheba. This, is, this truly speaks about his repentance, the style of his repentance, the content of his repentance. This gives us a beautiful example for us to follow when you and I commit a sin. Amen. The Christian life is all about you know, living in repentance, reconciling with God. That has to be a lifestyle. Amen? I don't want any of the members of my church here get the understanding that and God knows who we are. Don't worry about it, man. He covers it all with grace. I don't have any problem with grace. He gives us grace. That's the reason we are here. But there are times the Lord asks you to do your part. That is called, you repent and come to Him. This church preaches it. I believe it because the book tells us. Repentance is needed. Any restoration requires repentance. Alright? So, we talked about two kinds. I'm just, I'm just giving you just a recap so that you just travel with me. I said there are two kinds. One is spontaneous sins. The other one is called premeditated sins. <clears throat> two kinds. On the just happened to tell 
a lie. Anything. Anything can be. That's not, you heard of people say white lies. Is there something called white lies? You heard? You heard white lies? What does white lies mean? Come on, respond. White lie. Is there something called black lie? What is white lie? Every lie is a lie. People say, I had to tell a lie to escape from that situation. I didn't really mean it. That's what, they, they apply what you call situational ethics. Situational. They But as God is concerned, everything is a violation. And we have to take it seriously. So we looked at two different things. One is spontaneous, sometimes it just accidentally happened. That we understand, we all, I do sin accidentally. Most things spontaneously, it happens. You belittle somebody, say something. We all do things, so spontaneous thing. Never thought about it. But I'm talking about here, they are high in sin. It's a coolier type of. That's called premeditated sin. I, I, you remember me telling about even the court and the judge looks at a case. Let's say you, went, you, you, you were driving out. He said, you're, you're, you're crossing the road, going to the other side. It's a very difficult place. You have to be very careful when you cross the left side, okay? So even if you have to go take that little pocket and turn around, that might be the best way to go out from this place. Because it's a very dangerous spot right there. Right, sometimes when, when we cross, and you, you know, accidentally sometimes you hit someone. Let's say you hit somebody and they die. What is, what is it called? It is called vehicular manslaughter. One thing under the one thing under the but if somebody was to prove that you did it on purpose, you did it on purpose, then the penalty is very severe. You intentionally wanted to go hit that person, you did it. If they can prove it, you can be in jail for a long time. Eating your breakfast at 5.30 in the morning. But if it is accidental, you never thought about it. Then, they're going to be very lenient towards you. But there could be a civil case, and somebody sue you for big money. If your pocket is deep, then they'll sue you and get more money. That's a different thing altogether. But as the court is concerned, your penalty is not going to be that severe. Think about this here. We've been studying the story of David. Would you say this was a spontaneous sin or it was premeditation? You had to look at the whole thing. Not just on the, on the, on, on the terrace top or on the, on the top of the terrace, but think about all other things that followed. Premeditated. And the Holy Spirit was waving the red flag many times. David, get back. David, get back. David was trying to silence that voice. Why blame David? All of us, don't we have, didn't we, did we not have incidents that we can talk about premeditation on our part? It can be different things, but you knew exactly what you're doing. You were going into it. And even a premeditated sin, in the light evening time, when you get to go to bed, you say, ah, if I have done anything, forgive. Do you think that will be forgiven? It's hard for me to believe that. There were days in my personal life, I used to shoot such prayers. Knowing that God will figure it out. They are going to go here, I go a broken and a contrite spirit, God will not disappoint. A lot of us think that because No, 
It has nothing to do with you losing your job. It's not that brokenness. It is brokenness over your sin. God will not pass over that prayer. He will come to you because He sees you in brokenness. Listen, young people. Listen, adults, my brothers and sisters, members of this church, and people who are watching me from distant lands. Listen, our, our repentance has to be genuine. If you have been used to the culture of just telling anything from, your, from here, not from your heart, stop that from today onwards. Those are the people, blessed are those who mourn. Do kick in the Bang you one more. Hallelujah. So we talked, we, we went over some of these things, and I'm just taking you along. A broken spirit. And one of the things that when we studied this 51, Psalms 51, David possessed a good heart knowledge about his sin, the nature of his sin. You should at least acknowledge what you did. That's very important. It's a requirement. And you remember us uh, reading the first two or three verses. Let's look at from verse 3 on verse uh, 3 to 5. I'm just reading... Uh, from, for you from Passion Translation. It says, for I am so ashamed. Listen, I'm so ashamed. So you don't feel shame until you recognize what you did. Leo. Yes. You have no shame until you realize what you did. So this realization of the nature of our sin is critical in this repentance process. What did I do? Lord, what did I do? Remember what I did. I'm so ashamed. I feel such pain and anguish within me. I can't get away from the sting of my sin against you. Lord, everything I did, I did right in front of you. For you saw it all against you and you above all have I sinned. Everything you say to me is infallibly true and your judgment conquers me. Lord, I have been a sinner from birth from the moment my mother conceived. No, he goes on to talk about something a little more serious stuff. But I'm just telling you the first part that I want to tell you is that a good heart knowledge about what we have done. Sit for a moment. Before you pray, even before you pray, next time before you sit for confessing your sins, it's for me also, all of us. Before you say anything about your confessing your sin, sit there and realize what you just did. Just, just take for a moment. Take it, take it, take it. Time out. Time out. Two minutes break. Just realize, what did I do? So that knowledge becomes very important. Now, we said, David realized something. He recognized that who was the ultimate target of his sin? Ultimate target of his sin. Let's say if I did something, let's say I said something to Shaya this morning, and she's broken this morning. Just imagine that. I didn't go to my neighbor Sam. I didn't go to any other place. I didn't say call any of you, but to my wife. I said something that hurt her. She's just broken so much. Now you tell me, ultimately do you think I hurt her? No. 
Who is she? She is the daughter of a king. King Jesus. Amen. Who came to stay with me in my house. And the Lord told me in this book. That I am to love her. As Christ loved the church. That I'm not supposed to hurt her. I'm just simply taking a closer relationship here. Are you all with me? Okay. If I was thinking, if I'm just thinking, I just talked to her. I just belittled her. I hurt her. I did something to her. Why is it bothering God? If you don't understand it, then you won't confess. Every sin ultimately targets God. Listen to that today. Every sin you do, every lie you say, every gossip you and I make, everything we do, everything we do, ultimately the target is God. Sin can never be sin unless you understand the personal aspect of sin. It is against a person you have sinned. Hallelujah. So Sammy says here, against you, you only have I sinned. That's the best way to start a repentance. I'm so sad that you made me mad. Did you hear that? I'm so sad that you made me. What is that? What is that? Ah, confession of the word, I'm going to go to God. We need to own it up. That's why we not only just ask forgiveness to one another, you also need to be asking forgiveness to God first. Katawe, I broke the law. I broke your commandments. And then say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I know what I did. I realize it. I feel so sad. Go from there. Against you, Yuli Havai, sinned. I also told you that any understanding of our sin that is impersonal. If that's where you're looking at a sin, impersonal way, you're looking at a sin. Detached from this notion of a personal assault against God. If that's the way you're looking at it, then this can bring remorse or regret for our sins, but never repentance. You just felt remorse. You became remorseful. But that is not repentance. Hallelujah. You know, remorse can sometimes, you know, I, I remember last week telling you, sometimes you even cry. Tears roll out. But that is not necessarily repentance. Repentance in Agathamuri Kananirundu. You know, sometimes in repentance, tears would come, but tears alone is not repentance. You may be shedding tears because you are feeling bad. Not because you did something against God. You feel bad because you did something against your wife. That's it. It doesn't go any further. And you feel so bad, she's not going to make you chaya this evening. She's not going to make dinner this evening. So you're feeling so sad. She is so upset. Sorry. That's not repentance. Repentance will never be repentance. Unless you're really connected to a personal God. 
Can I hear an amen to that? Hallelujah. You know, remorse can sometimes you feel like you are a failure. I'll just read this to you. Just listen. I just, this, I'm just quoting this way. People usually say, I can't believe I did that. I'm so stupid. Sorry for using the word. I'm such an idiot. I made a fool of myself. I hurt other people. That's remorse. It's good. Good stuff. So far it's good stuff. But you have to go further than that. To God. I've hurt you, Lord. I hurt you. It needs to go. It needs to go to the root of it. Hallelujah. Praise God. So what makes sin a sin is not that I broke a law, but I broke the heart of God. I broke his heart. Not that I trampled his law, but I trampled on him. I trampled on the Son of God, not just his law. Hallelujah. I trampled. On the loveliness of God. Hallelujah. And the Devatinda Mano Heratate Nyan Chautikalan. That's the reason. You know, based on that, I feel remorse. All those things are there. And tears might come. But that's the beginning of our true journey. Because against you, I have sinned. I also told you that the Bible tells us that. God is grieved when we sometimes do things. The Bible says this, do not grieve thee. Holy Spirit. God can be grieved. See, if God is not personal, then he's not going to, if he's not a person, a thing he's not going to grieve. He is a person. That's the reason God is grieving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's the first thing. He understood it. The real nature of it. He understood the real ultimate target of it. And then we looked at what he understood the multi-level impact of his sin has caused. Thunder e pabum. Look, look at look at that uh, in verse 51, uh, 51, verse 1. Three words that are used there. One is called transgression. Okay, then he talks about his iniquity. Okay, look at all this. Each one talks about one aspect of our sin or, or one part of it. One talks about crossing the boundary or the moral boundary God has said. I cross and I link it you. That's called lankanam. I cross the line, Lord. I acknowledge my, I know my transgressions. Okay, I was brought forth, brought forth in iniquity. There it talks about my true nature. I come with this bend, this crookedness, twisted life. That's who I am. By birth, all of us are that. We have the sin nature within us. And only redemption happens when the day the Lord is going to glorify you. Amen. The Lord gives us the power. Holy Spirit gives us the power to overcome these things. And you and I still walk with this nature, sin nature with all of us. You and I are capable of killing somebody, stealing, doing anything. There's someone holding you back. It's because of that you and I are coming here. You and I are not committing those things. Not because you have that, I have that willpower. 
No man, it's not because of your willpower, because someone is restraining you. That is a Holy Spirit ministry. It's because the Holy Spirit is preventing you from doing things. And Psalmist is saying that though I have this, I should have listened to you. I should have surrendered myself to you. By surrendered myself to the appetite of the flesh. And the Jadatin, the Ichagal Ginyanane, Sarandri Edward. Holy Spirit, that's exactly what I did. I'm not blaming any other person. I'm not blaming Bethsaida. Why did she take bath at that time? I would want the Latin English Corpani Kondawa. Or other people say, why did you have that apple tree or whatever the tree in the middle of the garden? It was just so beautiful to behold. If that, that tree was the whole trouble, don't blame the tree. Tree lay you around the door. It's our nature. That needs, that's the reason the Bible tells us be led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I was having a conversation with a young 15-year-old boy yesterday and day before. Just a very nice guy. He's a good, muscular guy. So you're having a little conversation. So he was asking me a lot of questions that he had in mind. I said, listen. If you are in the habit of, I'm just saying for a young person, watching things, okay, whatever it may be, in a visual media, whether it's a movie or something else, which probably contains adult materials, you 15-year-old, 16-year-old, you watching it, what happens to you naturally? Your hormones get triggered. Yes or no? Yeah. Because you're capable. So when you watch, when you surrender yourself to something, sit before the idiot box, watch things that you shouldn't be watching at the age of 18, 20, before you're married. You watch this, even after marriage, you have to be careful. You should not to watch it. I'm not giving you permission for that. But listen here, and you watch it, and then you feel this tension, your hormones going crazy, your brain is going crazy. Why do you blame God? Number one, you should not have watched in the first place. Because that will not go through Philippians 4.8 filter. Our children are familiar with Philippians 4.8 filter, right? If you don't know, read your Bible. You can only have things that go through that filter. Satya vayad okayim. Kana vayad okayim. Nidhi vayad okayim. Salkirtya, they have it all. Finally, brothers, sisters, whatever is true, whatever is... So things that are true, yes, it can pass through. Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, even if it's coming from Disney, very close to you, your neighbor. Disney movie, whatever it is coming from, if that contains something that does not go through the filter, you can't watch it. You shouldn't watch it. Don't blame God. Hallelujah. Who should make that decision? Your police mother, police dad? I'm talking about baptized, saved, baptized children and the adults. It's a Holy Spirit that needs to guide you. About Maclay. When preachers preach like this, don't be upset with the preacher. Don't stone him. Take the good part of it. Something is not good, just leave it aside. Just say your pastor is crazy. But something is good, you receive it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's say you're going on 125 miles an hour, and you're going to stop right there. It's difficult, man. It's difficult. It's going to drag you for another maybe two, three hundred feet, and you stop. Otherwise, it'll flip. Go slow. Go slow. Go according to the word of God. 
Hallelujah. So I'm just talking about the iniquity part of it. The other one is called sin. Sin simply means you miss the mark. God has called us to holiness to keep a standard. He's calling us to you know, maintain that standard. Every time you sin, you fall short. You fall short. You fall short of where God wants you to be. And Psalmist is saying, I fell short, God. I fell short. So three things he is realizing here. One, I crossed the boundary. I crossed the boundary. Don't say, Pastor, you should come to my school. Everyone in my class, they do it. They watch it. Or you could even say, oh, pastors, children are watching it. Don't even worry about pastors' kids. If they do something, they should go to jail. Or they should go to hell. Any pastor. So just because pastor does it, pastor's kid does it, some some elders in the church does it, or the children, that does not make a wrong right. Wrong is always wrong. Can I hear an amen in the house of God? Hallelujah. When When you cross the moral boundary God has set for you, have the guts in repentance. Say, God, I cross the boundary. Hallelujah. Then tell the Lord, Lord, I, have, you know, I was born in iniquity. I have this tendency within me, this nature within me, this evil flesh within me, Lord. I'm walking with it, oh God. Only when I submit myself to the hand of God, to the Spirit of God, my emotions to the Spirit of God, only I have victory. The moment I yield myself to the flesh and the desires, of, I fall apart, oh God. Forgive me, Lord. Last time, that's what I did. I didn't surrender my body, my emotions to the Holy Spirit. I fell from the standard, Lord. I acted like a common person who has nothing to do with God. They fell, I fell too. This is exactly one of the best ways to approach this whole topic of repentance. Hallelujah. You know, I can tell you something. The more you understand it, the more it will deter you from doing something that is wrong. One of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to remind you everything that the God speaks to you. What will he do? He will remind you about everything I have taught you. That's what Jesus said. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. When you read the Bible, when you read Bible, when you hear a sermon, when you pay attention to a Bible study, it gets stored in your brain. And you may not think about it. It doesn't come to you, but in the right time, when you are really right there, you know, almost getting to a compromising situation, and you, if you can cry into Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will run to the storage. He will bring it to you and flash it before you. Son, you remember this Bible verse? Your mama taught you a long time ago. Your Sunday school teacher taught you. This is something you heard in the church. Your pastor preached. Listen to that. Come on, listen to it. Run away. Flee, flee, flee. It works. It works. So working with God is very important. Hallelujah. So this psalm is really got a good understanding about the nature of the sin that he has committed. Psalm 15 makes it very clear. Then he actually talks about the, the kind of restoration that he's, he's, he's looking for. Because he knows what are the areas have been affected. Look at verse number 2. Okay? Verse number 2. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Okay, and then Namnai Kaligi and the Agurthium Mojik Pokaname and the Pabam Niki and the Enemy. 
Okay, she understood every time you sin, it defiles your spirit. It defiles your spirit. Your spirit gets defiled, your soul gets defiled. So David understood this very well. He's asking for a thorough cleansing. And the Bible you can wash me. What is he asking? What kind of washing is he asking? Hmm? Wash me thoroughly. And a nanite karigalam. Why? The stain has got it. This, this also has uh, a, 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 a picture behind it. It's a picture of a, a, a clothing get stained. Okay, a clothing gets stained. It goes into every in the part of it. So God, just mere washing, mere rinsing, dipping it up is not going to do a job. Lord, you have to do a thorough washing on me. And then Namo it karigan and Gathawe and the Agatha Tikini Kari on the law. You karavoning, Lord, you have the stain has to go. God, you have to do a thorough job on me. Wash me thoroughly. Maybe I get hurt a little bit. Maybe you press me. I can feel it. That's okay. I want the stain out of my soul. And the Agathuni Kare in the other way on the Kalayana Maker Tavi. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's like laundering dirty clothes. Sin has left a terrible stain on my soul. Now look at verse 7. Yanan Melanagan to the Na. He so punda ne. And he's going on detail. You know, he says, Purge me with. His up or high sub that I shall be clean. Just purge you, purge me with high sub that I shall be clean. Himata call will kind of the name the enemy. Kaliganame. It means, you know, the purge means to tear the kaname and the padatana. It literally means decin me. I've sinned so decin me. God is talking about expunge. You know, there are people who know then you get arrested for something. Your record stays in the court. Next time you apply for a job, it shows up. You had an arrest. Or whatever, how many times? It's all show. It's in the record. So there are some people who go to the length and get a nice lawyer to get the records expunged. Only certain things, because if it's, if it's in your favor, then you can get the records expunged. They say you did not get uh, convicted for it. In that case, you can go back to and say, get the records expunged. So that next time when they search records, it may not show up. Samus is asking. Because I will not let Taro job in the chair. And the fabric will carry in the stain or the stain that got into my soul. You know, Lord, I want you to expunge it, oh God. Nam my karigi. And then the Shuti Ergame Gartave. Praise God. Hallelujah. Not just, not just an evil act. Not the desire, not the attitude, but the moral pollution that has happened, sin that tainted me. It makes me so dirty deep inside. And the Agathari will lie me, Agathari. I just don't feel right. And therefore, you should do a thorough cleansing in my life. You know, if the Lord, if you still come sit in a church, you still cannot worship properly. You won't be able to worship God. If you really feel dirty with inside of you, you feel guilty within you. You can come sit here, you can act as if you are doing this or you can do this. Maybe you lift up your hands halfway through, but you're not worshiping God from your heart. That will happen only when your 
sins are forgiven, when you get expunged, when the Lord washes you inside. Amare langana chebichum, paabamarichum, kitya manishan, bhagyavan, hallelujah, my sins are covered, forgiven, I feel so good deep in my heart. And you worship God. You worship God. Hallelujah. So, a sense of defilement you must experience. A sense of defilement. So he's forgiven us. He's repentance. An easy job. If somebody makes it easy for you, that's not what Bible tells us. It's not an easy job. You understood the nature of it. You understood three forms of violation that was part of it. Now you understand the moral defilement that took place, the stain in your garment. They are the ones who are going to go. They are the ones, you know, who are without stain. They wash their garments in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. If it have been a chai kare unnu alida, this is, we are not talking about the stain of uh, tea or, or masala or anything. We are talking about stain in your heart, stain in your soul. That can be only washed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Kunyat indektatal kuricho, kunyat indektatal. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Hallelujah. Eshu indektatal, the karigal of only the blood of Jesus can wash us from every defilement. But a condition, if you confess your sins, Namla Pabangale, and the Varno, Namla, Etuvarim Nangil, it's a condition. If you confess our sins, then God is able, God is willing. To cleanse us from every defilement, forgive us every sin, and cleanse us from every moral defilement. Hallelujah. I want the putra issue in the record of number Sagel Pabo Mboki. We should not walk away from the church, any service, without thinking about the blood of Jesus. His blood, his, you need his blood, his blood pleads for you. Have a director. The call, go to get away. Some sorry, you know, put your head again. You have come closer to a blood, but much speaks much better than the blood of Abel. His blood is available for us. So he understood a restoration is really needed from the defiling effects of sin. Psalmist goes on to say in verse 3 For I know my transgressions, and my transgressions, or oh, my sin is ever before me, and the Langanangle Nana are you know, and the Pabam and the Mumbila poor. You know, I want you to know something. If you are a child of God, listen until. You give up God and walk away. Listen very carefully. Lord does something very interesting. You did something wrong. I did something wrong. One of the things the Lord does is actually, and the Papa, poor, and the Mumbilidik, let's say this is what you have done. Every time that you close your eyes, you see the bottle. Whatever the bottle represents. When you come and you read the Bible, the bottle is before you. The Lord is not going to remove that sin from your sight. He is going to hold it for you. Praise the Lord. The Lord will hold it. It is ever before me. Psalmist says, I go here. It is right there. I go there. It is right there. I go to the temple. It is right there. Anytime I want to make a music, it is right there. The Lord is holding it right in front of you. I thank God for the grace of God. Had it not been for that, you would not, you felt such terrible in your body. You felt so terrible in yourself. I'm tired of it. And they Part of your hand was heavy upon me. God, I can't turn. You box me all around, Lord. I just feel like I'm in the box. 
It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the Ravala of Andri Kimberdom, let me say it in Malayalam. In the Ravala of Andri Kimberdom, Magane Magale, then the Papa Takurchi Parishital Mava, then a Gorma Varitan Nondangil, Ara than a Gadi Kimberdom, then a Gorma Varitanangil, Aindia than the Chapter Tilana, there is still life. Chavara Yeshi Pirala, Nindal Baki Unda, God can still resurrect you. That means you are not dead. You're not dead yet. You can still see things. You can still respond. You can still feel in your heart. Hallelujah. The Lord is telling you. I'm looking at it has a positive effect to drive you to your knees. And the Pabam and the Munbil. Oh. You know, God will not probably he will not move his hand until you fall on his or fall on your knees and confess it. Once you confess it, he doesn't have to hold it like this anymore. And you don't have to turn all your attention for that. You can give the Lord glory, honor, and praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why go away from the church? In the Ravali and Nana Tila Parishadma, what do you know? I'm just I'm just just did probably a one point of what I wanted to say. I believe Holy Spirit always has a reason. You've been coming to church, going home, just the way you came, feeling bad, feeling agitated. Feeling angry. For what reason? I don't know. You feel dull. Oh, the worship service. I don't like the English songs. I don't like Malayalam songs. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like preaching. I don't like people sitting next to me. You've been going back and forth like that. But deep inside of your heart, you yourself know there is something wrong. Because it's ever before you. There's something that between you and me, there is something between you and me, there is something separates between you and me that needs to be gone. In the Ravale, before you go home from this place today, I do not want any single person walk away from this place carrying the same burden of guilt. Same burden of sin. And going home with the same burden today. His blood is available. It's flowing for you today. His blood is here for you. Can I hear an amen in the house of God? His blood is still here. His blood, the opportunity is still here. A day will come, listen, a day will come when every knee will bow before Him. Every tongue will confess, Jesus Christ, you are Lord. But I tell you, Bible will tell you, very late. Too late. That's the way God works. Every person one day will bow before God before they go to hell. In front of the white throne judgment, everyone will say, You are Lord. I rebelled against you, but you are Lord. But it's too late. But today for us, your Lord is not coming in judgment today, He is still your Savior. He is still your intercessor. He is still your mediator. He is your high priest standing right there, reconciling. You know, he's just telling the Father, Father, I, sh- I, did. I died for that sin too. I shed my blood for that sin. But he's looking at you and he's, he's buying time for the Father. Listen, everybody. He's looking at the, let's say that's the Father. He's looking at the Father and seven. Satan brings accusation against you. Listen, Jesus pleading with the Father, saying, Father, I died for that sin. But he's looking at you to come in repentance. Will you come in repentance? His blood is available. 
Salvation is a free gift, but it's only given to those who receive it in faith. Those who repent of their sins will receive it. I feel like praying this morning. You can close your eyes. Hallelujah. Maybe some of your sickness is linked to what is what you're harboring in your heart. I'm not saying every sin is linked to that, but I'm saying maybe some of the things that you are suffering is directly linked to what is going on. Hallelujah. I want to pray today. Every eye closed. Praise God. And I don't want any camera to be focusing on the crowd today. Just look at me. Just focus on me. Because I felt such a burden to preach this morning. You are supposed, church is supposed to be a place where you experience liberation. Remain in freedom. Don't be a slave to sin anymore. His blood is available for you. I don't know what you are holding in your heart. Last night or Friday night I preached in Atlanta about being offended. I don't know if it is offense your issue. Is it last year issue? If it's greed your issue. Is it gossip? Is belittling somebody? Another human being who is created in the image of God. Is it being hard to your own husband and wife? Is it too much worldly pleasures? Is it watching things you shouldn't be watching? Even after seeing, knowing that you are a child of God and seeing the red flags, high-end sins, are you still pursuing it? Premeditation in doing things. I want to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every eye closed. If you really feel God has spoken to you today, I feel God has spoken to me to bring this message to you today. I'm not asking you to stand up, you sit there, respond to God, because there's no point if you don't respond to God's word. Put your hands up, your right hand up, visibly. I'm so encouraged to see so many people, including the some adults responded young people responded you know people of god this may be a beginning of a new journey for you a new journey for you his blood is available here jesus blood is available here today let me pray for you father as a servant of yours lord i don't stand here being eligible to deliver this message. I have been only a conduit, just an agent, a channel. God, you spoke through using my mouth, my voice, and I surrender myself to you, Lord Jesus. Cleanse me, Lord. I'm praying for brothers and sisters, my young children here. Lord, you have seen their hands, oh God. I see, Lord, so many hands have lifted up in this place. Father, whatever they are struggling, I pray that today the blood of Jesus will cleanse them, Lord. in the as they leave the sanctuary, they go with the free spirit, Lord, rejoicing in you. Feeling relieved in their body and spirit. Thank you, Papa, for hearing our prayers. And I, as your servant, I bless them especially this morning in your name father we thank you for all the blessings you have given us material blessings as your children have brought it to give it to you today bless them thank you for the jobs thank you for the businesses lord if there's anyone struggling financially lord jesus supply the needs lord as we collect these offerings and tithe may it be used to support the work of your 
church here and also Lord to spread of your gospel in distant lands Lord thank you in Jesus name we pray